what's up y'all so it's like 3 54 maybe 3 55 now at p.m and it's june 20th 2023 so a father's day god brought me to this scripture i'm about to read to y'all and then he reminded me again um yesterday which was the 19th around 9 11 p.m and this is what it says it says this is the generation of those who seek him who seek your face even jacob but he added an s for me and so when i thought of that too i was listening to a song um it was like a young rapper but um but it's a gospel song right and he was like a saying about god right and i was like hmm god i was like isn't this amazing um that like these like younger people right are so hungry and on fire for god like they're just in love like they're not brought up in church it's not all this rules and regulations like they are just getting to know god right and loving god for themselves and i'm thinking like wow like that like they're so on fire for you and um then i think he brought me to this scripture yesterday and so i was like wow i was like okay so now back to this jacob part right and so i'm like jacobs like god what are you saying what about jacobs um and then i was like thinking about um the scripture of like god wrestling with jacob right and like basically saying like god i'm not letting you go until you bless me and uh then that's when jesus changes his name from jacob to israel okay and so like as i'm thinking of jacob i'm thinking like cunning like he was deceiving right all these things and i wrote down uh god is coming for the loss this year jacobs are returning and being raised then i wrote um turning them from jacob to israel and then it says founder of many nations and blessings of the seeds and then 12 tribes of israel this is a turnaround season and god just started talking to me about how he's coming for the jacobs in this season the ones who are cunning the ones who are um like the younger kids the ones who keep putting god aside the ones who um are out in this world living it up like the ones who just people look down upon right the ones who started off their lives on the wrong path right and he's saying like the ones who have gotten into some things like he is coming for you this season and he is willing and wanting to redeem your name and change you from the image of the cunning the conniving the uh mischievous like the the ones that people are like mm, they ain't never gonna be nobody right the ones who's like in and out of jail like the ones that people just aren't believing in the ones who people turn their backs on god is coming for you for you he even gave me the word prodigals and i'm like okay god <laughs> you're calling them back home to you right and in all of this like god is saying like this is the season for the jacobs to return and he's coming to redeem you he wants you and he still has a plan for you because you guys are the rule breakers you guys are the ones that are coming for him and you don't care what it looks like you've done been through so much you don't you don't care you've done paid a price so much you don't care what it looks like you you're not going to conform to these rules and these regulations that people are trying to put on um god's system right people are trying to make it seem like god is equivalent to order and god is not equivalent to order god is god and he created order and they like to use like a lot of manipulation which is why it's important that we read our bible because if we don't read the holy bible then people will tell us anything and they will tear up and feed us pit like 
bits and pieces of the word and use it to conform to their ideology and theology, right? And God's not with that. Like, he wants people who actually have a relationship. Because a lot of these people are self-seeking glory folks. These are people who are sitting on their high horse, wearing their good old hat, right? Thinking that they're the chief in command. And they would rather you disrespect God to please them. Like, when you're sitting here and you're saying, like, nah, God said obey him right like in acts what god 529 thank you jesus um you know peter and the apostle said we ought to obey god rather than man and man wants us to obey them rather than god and that's an issue because now they're trying to be god right and a real person who loves god would be like okay god like what are they saying but people aren't taking things back to god that's the problem they think that they are god and that's an issue because god says no man will take my glory and i don't think people understand god will kill you and that's just what it is i know people like to think of like you know happy go lucky merry go round nah god's about god's about that action like people are scared of the devil when they should fear god like yeah god is gentle and he's kind but he also don't play i mean did you forget about his right hand i'm just saying <laughs> don't be his enemy so i'm like okay god like give me more information um on on jacob like uh that i can connect with the word i'm gonna give you and so i go back and i grab my notebook so i can read what was already said and then i grab my bible so i grab my bible and as i'm like leaving out of my room getting ready to go uh down the steps my pages start flipping and immediately i'm like okay god god is taking me to where i I need to be right and so then when I get downstairs I am like okay god like okay 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 thank you thank you for making it clear for for the people because listen God can tell me anything I believe him but it's y'all right y'all be the ones like well it's not a bible so I'm like god give me something for the people and because he cares he helped us us the out okay so now 3 28 p.m and this is what he ends up saying but they deceived him with their mouth and lied to him with their tongues for their heart was not steadfast towards him nor were they faithful in his covenant but he being compassionate forgave their inequity and did not destroy them and often he restrained his anger and did not arose um, all his wrath 39 says thus he remembered that they were just flesh a wind that passes and does not return and i'm like okay you are you're saying like even with the jacobs doing all this this stuff in the world right and their disbelief just all these things right he says but he remembers that they're but flesh and so he's coming for you guys with compassion now this is the perks now let me tell you about the other part he said because the good stuff's all in the return okay it's all in the return and so now he takes me to 17 and it says yet they still continue to sin against god to rebel against the most high in the desert and in their hearts they put god to the test by asking food according to their desires then they spoke against god then said can god prepare a table in the wilderness therefore the lord heard and was full of wrath and a fire was kindled against jacob and anger also Uh, mounted against Israel because they did not trust in his salvation in spite of all this they still sinned and did not believe in God's wonderful works so they brought their days to an end so he brought their days to an end in futility and their years in sudden terror 
When he killed them, <laughs> when he killed them, then they sought him and returned and searched diligently for God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. And then it ends with, for he established a testimony in Jacob. So he says all this to say, he's coming for you. You don't have to suffer even more just to get the turnaround and to get the perks because everybody who believes in Jesus Christ and everybody who turns from their wicked ways and everybody who really comes to God with their full heart and diligently seeks him will always find him. And he's saying, you've suffered enough, my child, and I'm ready for you to come. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't focus on what you've been through and be ashamed. I have enough compassion to carry the burden. I have enough compassion to love you through it all. I'm not like your earthly parent, but I am a heavenly father who knows all things about you. Why you went through what you went through, why you suffered, you don't have to explain to him. He knows what your options was. He knows what happened when you were a child. He understands it in the greatest capacity that you guys don't even understand fully, right? And we also don't always understand like that our triggers and the reason why we have these flare ups, you know, and disobedient and acting up and doing all these things is because of what we had to endure and a lot of stuff we forget, but God doesn't forget. And he's saying, you don't have to explain it to him for him to understand he was there. He was there in those dark times with you. But if you want to talk to him about it and explain yourself, for your own peace he will listen but he understands and all you have to do is come back come as you are my child the world may have counted you out but I will never because I know you and I knew you before I put you in the womb of your mother and I love you and I will continue to love you nothing can separate my love from you don't let the devil lie to you you. I want you. I miss you. Return to me. I can turn everything around. Although you felt like an outcast, you were never forgotten nor forsaken. There's still things I want to do in you. There's still things I can do through you. I can turn your story around for my glory. I can give you a better ending. Don't let the devil lie to you. You can be mine again arms wide open repent i will forget it's as far as the east is from the west don't hold on to the burden my child don't hold on to the burden my child don't hold on to the pain don't hold on to the pain i am the healer i am the physician i am the one who can change all things i am god Don't let the world lie to you. God says, I can turn you, Jacob, into Israel, just like I have done for Jacob. I have given him 12 tribes of Israel that, oh my God, everybody. Mm, it was great. Came from that. This man that had this bad reputation, right? His name even means like mischievous or something. God gave him Israel. And you know what Israel is? God's chosen people. It don't matter what people say. God can wash you up and make you new. God has grace for you. So much grace for you. So much but you have to return. And so what he was saying on that second half is like, you know, <laughs> you've been through enough. Just diligently seek him. Don't, 
suffer more even though it's what you're used to you don't have to be in no toxic relationship or toxic environments he wants to free you you don't have to go through everything being ripped from under you you don't have to see all this warfare you know start to happen and crumble because a lot of people gonna die they are god is coming for a lot of the wicked his judgment is falling but his grace stands for those who want it now you are better than your past you are better than your pain you are better than the labels the world gave you you're so much better free yourself because who the sun sets free is free indeed come back to god let him wash you make you new wash you over with his word let him take all those lies and them chains up off of you so he can use you the devil might have thought he had you and put you in some grave clothes but god is ready to resurrect you come on home and it's not hard don't let the devil make you think that either because god is not like people People will hold your feet to the fire for the things you've done in the past. But God will clean you up, give you new shoes, help you stand and carry you. And reintroduce you into the world and be like, this is my child. Say something about this one and we gonna have an issue. God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. <laughs> your enemies are going to be his enemies because what's going to happen is he's going to clean you and give you the desires that he has so now you'll start disliking what he don't like because now you are looking like your father evil will be evil good will be good like you will be a replica of your father right because we are made in his image some a little contaminated, so we ain't got the character. But some he cleans up, and now we stand for righteousness. But choose this day who you will serve. While his hand is extended, come on home, because it's about to get crazy. I've been telling y'all this for a minute. We live in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3. And that's just what it is. It's only going to get darker and darker and darker, and people are going to get darker. And, and they're really going to be scared running to God. Why even do that to yourself when you can come on back while it's still peaceful and you can be ready for the war that's coming instead of trying to duck and hide and find somebody who's already with God? Why not be the one who who lends a hand and tells somebody, I've been through what you've been through. If you knew where I came from, if you knew what I've been through, man, if only you knew. God loves you too. And so, you know, there's the children of God who are already preparing getting ready for the war that's coming and then there's some who are gonna get caught in it and then there's some who's gonna run and want to hide pick your side you could be being trained up right now ready why do that to yourself why suffer just because it feels safe why because it's not always gonna feel safe and it's not always gonna be an easy escape so why play yourself? Why why hate yourself? You deserve another chance just like the rest of us. We all deserve grace. We all make mistakes. Even if you are holy and righteous, right? God says a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. You know, like people don't want to get righteous people. You know, people who like God gives the influence to and um, that he's placed over people. Like people would just expect you to be holy and sanctified 24-7. No, we all fall. And even though some may be more ahead and advanced in their journey, we all need grace. And so Jacob, stop playing. Your father wants you. He wants to love you. He wants to bless you. He wants to change your life. You don't have to wait to go to heaven to live a beautiful life in the land of the living. And we know that because the, the prayer is, right? God, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he means that in every aspect, even our lives, even who we are, right? God, who we are in heaven, let it be us, you know? Bring it down, you know, in, in every, every, every form. Um, so just believe, you know, that you're worthy of more and God loves you no matter what. Like, God will come for the person in a crack house. God will come 
for the homeless person. God will come for the person like who's done the dirtiest of deeds. Like God will come for his. Ain't nothing too filthy for God. God comes for his children, leaves the 99 for the one, and you are the one, Jacob. So come on back. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you give them the grace for the journey. Father God, I pray that you convict them of the wrongdoing so they may repent. Father God, and I pray that you take the taste of the world out of their mouths. And I also pray, God, that you would hide them under your wings and let them know that all they have to do is give up. You will do the work through your Holy Spirit. They cannot clean themselves up or else they would have already been out of this mess that they've gotten themselves into. Father God, let them know how deeply loved they are and cared for they are by you, Father. Wash them up and make them new, Father. Give them an open arms to love themselves and to trust you in this process. Give them a surrenderance and a yielded heart, Father, and a willing heart and mind to trust you and do as you say and watch you lead and guide them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name, amen, Father, and close them in uh, righteousness and holiness, Father, and grace and mercy for others. And Father, help them to um, be a forgiving person, to forgive those who've wronged them and to release them unto you, Father God. And I ask that you give them the grace to forgive themselves and to take the necessary steps, Father, to, to um, be closer with you and to serve you all the days of their lives. And I pray that you put fire in them. And I thank you for making them radical and on fire and rebellious to the rules of the world and um, obedient to you, God. And I just thank you for, for making them over, for making them over to be world changers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. I believe I'm out. Bye.